everyone and welcome back to Wee Wee GG. My name's Gina and today you may be wondering why I'm not in a classic um, 50 style or like a 40 style outfit. Um, well that's because today we're going to talk about West Side Story and make Puerto Rican empanadas. So this is something really important to me because I am Puerto Rican. My mom is full Puerto Rican. My dad's Irish, so actually it's kind of fitting that my first video was like an Irish shepherd's pie, and then this video is like Puerto Rican, so you're getting both sides of me. So I wanted to wear something a little bit more authentic and um, colorful. So I really love this movie today. Let me actually get my notes, and let me get my apron. Today, I think we'll do my video a little bit differently. Um, I think it'll be easier for you guys if you can actually see the food that I'm making. So I'll stand here and we'll talk about the film and then we'll actually just focus on the food whenever I'm showing you how to do something. And hopefully that'll be less confusing and make things work a little bit better for you all. Hopefully. Basically, a Puerto Rican empanada is a turnover. That's what the word means in English. It's also called a pasalillo. And sometimes um, people put sweet things in turnovers like apple turnover, cherry turnover, and that's why it's often called an empanada, to signify that it's made with meat. So let's get started. We're gonna start just by dicing an onion. It doesn't have to be perfectly sliced. Try to make it as even as possible. olive oil into a pan. We're gonna add the onions. A mounding spoonful of minced garlic. I do buy my garlic already minced, I will admit that. Um, there are people who definitely only want their garlic fresh. It's really up to you. It's a lot easier and a time saver to just have minced garlic on hand. But if you wanna take the time, it is great to have fresh garlic. And then you're gonna saute that for a little bit. It should take about two or three minutes to brown the onions and soften them down, and then we're gonna add the ground beef. And if you listen closely, you can hear it sizzling. And you just kinda of wanna stir it occasionally, not really leaving it, just so that way it's all browned evenly. Um, you can also add bell peppers. I don't make mine with bell peppers inside my empanadas. So if you want to do it, you can do it like on the side. Or you can just like cut them up just like the same size you put the onion and add it in when you put the onion and the garlic in. Forgot to mention that. Another alternative you can start with. So the plot of West Side Story is basically set in the 50s in a multiracial blue collar neighborhood in New York. Um, it's about two gangs, the Jets, which are white, and the PRs, or the Sharks, which are Puerto Ricans. Um, and it stars about a young girl named Maria. She's the younger sister of Bernardo, and she meets Tony at a dance. So during this time, two police officers were also at that dance because the Sharks and the Jets had been having a lot of fights lately. And so the police officers wanted to make sure that nothing was gonna happen and that there wouldn't be any violence at this dance. Now that our onions and garlic is caramelized, we are going to start putting in our ground beef. It should sizzle like that. And we're gonna add some salt. We're adding pepper. And then we're gonna add two of my favorite spices, Goya adobo, that's the brand of Goya. The actual spice is called adobo, which means grill. And we're gonna sprinkle that just until it's covered. And then sazon, which actually means seasoning in Spanish. And um, we're only gonna use about half of this foil packet, but save the other half. If you do buy it, we're gonna use it on the rice. 
and then just mix it together. And my heat was pretty high, so that's why my meat started browning immediately. And now that we have our meat in, we are going to start on our rice. So let me switch you over and we'll show you how to start the rice. So to start the rice, we're gonna add some olive oil. I'm taking off the lid of this thing because it just takes so long to really add in there. We're gonna heat that to a medium heat. And then we're gonna add a cup. Let me actually get that around. So that way it doesn't stick. All right, now we're gonna add a cup of rice. And this should take a few minutes for the rice to brown. Because that's all we want here. We definitely don't want it like more than like a golden brown. So just kind of stir it continuously for the next couple. The goal is to have the rice browned and the meat also browned by the same point. So that way when you're actually folding in the empanada, the rice is just boiling, or well it should be simmering, in water for 20 minutes. Now let's talk about the man who played Tony, Maria Natalie Wood's love interest. He wasn't actually the leader of the Jets, the white gang, um, but he was a strong part of it. Like he was kind of like one that everybody knew and loved. Um, the leader was a guy named Riff, played by Russ Tamblin. I can't read my notes, sorry. I actually made notes today because I think last week I forgot to mention like the ending of the video, it, I was a mess last week. So, I mean, I was a first timer, please understand. I don't do this all the time. So, like, we, we were working out the kinks, ma'am. Um, Richard Boehmer is actually still alive. He's 82 and he's the same age Natalie Wood would have been. They were both 23 when the movie was released. About George Jackins, he played Barnard Bull. He was the older brother of the woman Natalie Wood played, who was named Maria. I think I forgot to mention that earlier. Um, so he played her older brother, and he was the leader of the Sharks, also known as the PR Puerto Ricans gang. Um, he was actually Greek, not Puerto Rican. There wasn't many Puerto Ricans who were movie stars back then. And he's actually still alive. He's 83 years of age. All right, so our rice is now done, and so is our ground beef. As you can see, they're both my rice is golden brown and my beef is nice and browned. So now on the rice, we're gonna take two cups of vegetable stock. Stir that. This was one cup rice. I don't know if I remember to mention that. I always forget to give you all your measurements. And we're gonna take these. These are called gandules. They're basically a bean. I don't know, maybe I'm totally wrong. Maybe they're peas. They're called pigeon peas, but I don't think they're actually a type of pea. Um, but I don't know, in Spanish we just call them gondules. And we're gonna take the other half of our sazon, and we're gonna take a little more adobo. You can also add green olives to this if you would like. I'm gonna skip that for right now. I like green olives, but for this recipe, I think we're okay. And we're gonna let this heat up into a boil. Our rice is now boiling. So now we're gonna turn the heat down to simmer and we're going to simmer it for 20 minutes. I'm gonna cover it simmer for 20 minutes. So what we're gonna do with the ground beef, we're gonna use this pan to actually heat up all of the empanadas. So we're gonna take the ground beef out and put it into a bowl. And then these are our empanada shells. I don't make them by hand. So this is the brand I use. You can find it at any store that sells um, Hispanic foods and actually the place that I find them because I find them in the Asian stores. I have no idea why, but they always have them. And if I go to like a food city, they don't always have the empanadas that I need. Sometimes they'll just have like a kind of like a tortilla substitute and that's not what I need. It needs to be specifically para empanadas, como eso. And then kind of separate them just so that way they'll for sure defrost and they'll be easier to fold. And make sure to continue to stir your rice. You don't wanna forget about that until it's boiling. Okay, now you're gonna take your shells. I forgot to mention, you can make these by hand. 
I never learned to because my mom is a very like whatever is easiest let's do that kind of person and so I just I never learned how to make them by hand you know but I make them good they taste just fine and it cuts down a lot of time so you're going to cover about half of it and then you're going to add cheese Now you're gonna fold it over and you're gonna squish together the sides. You're actually gonna put some oil in a pan and get that ready for the empanadas. And then you're gonna take a fork. Look at that so you can see. And you're gonna close the ends of the shell like so this one it's not going to close very well because i made it a little big i think i do that with every single one like the first one that i make is always a little big and now that it's nice and closed we're going to put it in our oil our heat's back up to about a medium heat right now and then we're gonna flip it soon right now just keep making your empanadas Then, because the police officers are waiting around, noticing things, you know, trying to uh, make sure nothing happens, you know, because they're worried. They see all the violence happening here. So the police officers were at the dance, and so everybody agrees to go meet at this um, kind of like a like a shake shop or something. Like Walgreens back then used to have like some milkshake, something like that. Basically, so they all agree to go to this place. It's called Docs. And um, they agree to set up the rules for their fight. So when they agree, the fight's supposed to be fist only. And then they kind of each like make fun of each other. Like, oh, you're too chicken. You don't want to fight with like real stuff. So, but they agreed fist only. That's what they said. By this point, Maria and Tony were in love. You know, it's like Romeo and Juliet, you know, and it's the 50s. So. Tony had stopped by Maria's house one night and they sang a song outside and danced in the moonlight and now they were ready to get married. So Tony knows that this rumble is about to go down um, and so he tries to stop it. But in the middle of trying to stop it, Bernardo thinks that he's trying to make it worse. So Bernardo stabs Riff, the leader of the Jets, the white gang. And then Tony gets so mad about this that he kills Bernardo. He's like in a fit of rage. So by then, this time, Maria hears that her brother died. And then it's kind of like, well, what are you gonna do? It's your boyfriend who stabbed him to death. So if you cooked it right, your empanada should be bubbled like this one. We cooked this side and then we flipped it and we just put these two in. So Tony ends up sneaking over to Maria's house and he apologizes to her. He shows her that he still loves her and she realizes that she still loves him. They sing a song together, it's a musical. I don't know if I forgot to mention that, but it is, so there's a lot of singing going on and clearly that's the way to show love in the 1950s. So Maria still loves Tony, even though the sharks, the Puerto Ricans, are now looking to kill Tony because they killed his leader, but also Tony killed the leader of the white gang. Don't forget that part. They're both guilty here. All right, let me show you guys because I'm actually pretty proud of this timing here. So this is my last empanada. It just went into the pan. We're just going to try to close that. Okay. okay. And then this is the timer for my rice. So this is how close we are. Like, I don't think I've ever gotten my timing this perfect. We can actually check the rice right now. It's going to be a lot of steam. Look at that. As the pasta queen says, just gorgeous. So there's actually a couple of ways that you can chop on canes. You can cut them long ways or short ways. We're gonna cut ours the short way, like into little discs. So you start by taking off the peel and be careful not to break it while you're taking off the peel. So this one, notice there's a couple of bruises, so it's pretty ripe. 
then you're just gonna cut. Okay, so now we're taking a little bit of flour and we're just gonna lightly flour them. Some people want them totally fried. I don't like them completely fried. This is just to help a little bit. The sharks are looking to kill Tony and Maria's friend, Anita, Anita's actual girl. She was actually dating Bernardo, the one who died, um, at the time that he died. And she was also Maria's friend, but she loved Maria so much that she knew that Tony and Maria's love was real, just like the love she had for Bernardo. I'm pronouncing his name wrong, I know I am, but whatever. So Anita goes to tell Tony to be careful that the sharks are looking to kill him. But as she goes up to that dock's place, like that pharmacy that sells milkshakes and stuff, um, the Jets, the white gang, starts taunting her and making racial slurs at her because she's a Puerto Rican woman walking alone at night, going to where she knew the gang would be because she needed to find Tony. And Tony actually works at docks, so she knew for sure he would be there either with the gang or because he was working. So then, because they're being so rude to her, she decides to tell him Maria has been shot by the gang member looking to kill Tony. Now we're gonna take our platanos and we're just gonna layer them on top. Like kind of like basically in a little circle or so, just so that way they're all flat. and then it's gonna cook for a couple of minutes on each side. Tony's upset. He runs to Maria's house and tries to find her, but when he finds her, he ends up getting shot by that actual gang member. His name was Chino. And um, so then he like had just gotten to Maria, realized she was alive, all for him to be shot. Then Maria angrily takes the gun that just shot him and points it at all of the gang members because they had all followed Tony, you know. But she was so upset and grieving that all she could say was that all of them killed Tony and she wasn't actually able to kill anyone or shoot the gun even. So when you flip them, they should be this nice golden brown on the outside and then you let them cook for a couple more minutes. So now we're at our ending. Both gangs have now gathered around Tony's body to um, show that their feud is over and they've come together and realized that they've both lost people now, and they end up taking Tony's body away while Maria sings a sad song, and the end. All right, here it is after plating. I used the olives actually as a garnish. Look at all that, it's so pretty. Okay, now let's taste it. Don't fall out of my mouth. So good. Oh my god. I just love it. Everything. Forgot to grab myself a fork. I forgot to mention, I also have a drink suggestion for you guys. Goya should really be sponsoring me. They're not. But I've used nothing but their products today. So this is a Malta. It's basically like a soda made with malt. Um, it's not really fizzy, but it's very good, and it's what I suggest to buy when you're making these, to have the full experience. Yes, please watch West Side Story, and let me know how your empanadas go. And also, I forgot to mention, if you're also Puerto Rican and you make your empanadas differently than I do, please let me know, because the only Puerto Ricans I grew up with was my mom and grandma. So if they didn't do it that way, like, I could be totally making empanadas completely wrong my entire life and I would have no idea because I'm also white and I don't live where there's a lot of Puerto Ricans. So please let me know. Give me your recipes. Dímelo. All right. 
you all have a great day. Enjoy your Sunday. And thanks for watching Wee Wee Gigi. Be safe.